I call in every three days. And she goes, what do you need? And I go, there's a lot. Of, yeah, they go, there's a lot of people around. I can't talk, but I'll just say this. Boy, oing, oing, oing. And she goes, oh, you need that again. I go, do I? Oh. She goes, yeah. You oh, do. I see. I go. Boy, oing, 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 oing. <laughs> David, before we mm-hmm. get started today on today's very special, special edition of Superfly, if I might say, we have mm-hmm. got a show for you. I'm oh, telling we you, do. <laughs> that's that's when the show's like. <laughs> anyway, in other news, George Soros, mm-hmm. the billionaire, bought Odyssey, our parent company. So I right. wanted to just send him a a little note and read it here for um, George Soros. Okay. And I'll do it a little bit as a character just because. Sure. <clears throat> George Soros, <laughs> I am honored and grateful that you are now the proud owner of our parent company, Odyssey Incorporated. That's nice. I hope you will find our podcast, Fly on the Wall and Superfly, amusing. And may they always be a masculine podcast. George Soros, I'm going to leave you now because I know you are a busy man. That's it. <laughs> Dave, do, you know, do you know where that's from? I think it's from Godfather. Is it yeah. from Godfather? Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't my best Luca Brazzi. It should be more. I'm honored. I'm honored and grateful that you, <clears throat> you are now the proud owner <laughs> of our pen. Company Odyssey Incorporated. I hope you will find our podcast a masculine podcast. George Soros, I'm gonna leave you now because I know you're a busy man. Use either take, Greg. That was because masculine is where I got it. Yes, and that's just kind of interesting. Uh, that's great. We got a new boss. He's a. We got a new boss. We'll get him to call in soon. Okay, so I lit the candle. Now, <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. You had quite a weekend. Let's just, we call this segment Catching Up with David. Yeah. We save all of our, we walkie-talkie, but in-person stuff is this. Yeah. So. David so had what happened? a couple things going on. Uh, I'm going to do another day on that movie I, I, I'm doing, and I'm going to tell you about next week, because I'll, I'll have more done under my belt. I didn't know you were doing a movie. Did I tell you that? <laughs> doing a couple days on a movie. I can't keep track of your... No, it's not, okay. it's not the lead, so I don't care about it at all. But it is... Uh, it's something to uh, do, man. It's time killer. To say I was proud would be an understatement. <laughs> you better be proud of me. And then I went <laughs> to Houston to do a show uh, for a charity. And, and the funny thing, it was, you know, obviously a couple of days after the eclipse, we had talked to Sarah Sherman about the eclipse and learned everything mm-hmm. you could learn. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so when I go to Houston, I get <laughs> yeah. a, I get a uh, Uber, you know, he's going to take me to Chili's or wherever. So I get in nice. and just to be, I have nothing to talk about. So I go, Hey, did the eclipse make it down here? You know, whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. And he goes, Oh yeah, the eclipse, is ve- it got dark, you know? And I go, Oh, cause that's how he sounded. I have to always say that. And he goes, so I like it. It's a nondescript yeah, accent. It just yeah. it separates my voice from his. You know who's talking. It's a and, foreign guy. And so he goes, uh, you yeah. know, the uh, the sun goes here. And the, uh, the moon is here. I'm like, is he explaining an eclipse to me? I, 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 I went to second grade. So I go, oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. far, he's completely correct. He's <laughs> so perfect. far, he's fucking nailing it. And he's like, this. that's it. Now, yeah. also... Now he's going like, and the sun kind of goes like this. And I don't know which one's forward for him, but he goes, and, and so he's, now he's getting a little wrong. He's like, it's going kind of like this. And the sun jumps around and I go, okay, by the way, where are your hands? There's also a steering wheel. Cause now they're both off. Now he's just like, and then there's the stars oh, yeah. and I'm back here. And it's like, I'm like, just let's do the clips like this where I just, just, I like just those talk effects. Yeah. Meet me. All right. And so that was that story. <laughs> That's all. On that, that was story. that story. Yeah, I got to keep in touch. I have a story. Go ahead. I have a story about it. I, I got to learn um, mm-hmm. Rosetta Stone. I got. I know it's our sponsor. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, great. But I, I have. To, I have to learn better Spanish. I'm doing some work on my house. 
and I have a lot of brilliant, incredibly great Spanish workers, or probably from Mexico. So last week, the guys who were painting my house are so much fun. They laugh so hard that I had to go outside and go, I had to explain it to them. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, but they didn't speak any English. I'm like, yeah, so uh, guys, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to suppress them because they're laughing. I go, hey, guys, uh, could you, like, when you're laughing, I can't hear. And so could you just be quiet for like 20 more minutes and then you can really laugh. And, and the guy was looking at me literally like this, like, like Biden, basically. Yeah. Huh? And I didn't, I, I think he thought he was in trouble. So I go, just 10 more minutes and then you can be really loud. I'm doing a podcast oh, boy. over Zoom. And then they're like, what a <laughs> He doesn't know anything. They don't know I, Zoom. Who I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. No, you know, I, I have. It, you're telling him a hard thing. If you know broken English or broken Spanish, if he tried to tell you he was on a Zoom, you wouldn't get it. I mean, it's just too complicated. Yeah, mu mucho trabajo. Uh, muy bien. You know, como esta? I mean, I have all the basics. Oh. Um, more than I do. There's a, let me tell you, do you ever call a doctor to refill a prescription? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is this a different bit? <laughs> well, I, I call, uh, this is another bit. Okay. <laughs> well, I call, I call in every month for the same prescription. Mm -hmm. I won't say what it is. And the nurse who's so sweet always acts like it's the first time I've called. Remember it's every 30 days Yeah. and I'd like to order this. And she's like, Oh, you want to do what? <laughs> well, I want to order this prescription. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to the doctor. Yeah. 30 days later, I call again. Hi, oh. I'd like to order this prescription. Oh, <laughs> you want to do what? You want to order a prescription? <laughs> yeah, the same one, same address, same number. Oh, uh. I don't know where to send it. I'm going to have to talk to the doctor. <laughs> That's it. I do. I, I call in every three days and she goes, what do you need? And I go, there's a lot. Of, yeah. They go, there's a lot of people around. I can't talk, but I'll just say this boy. Oing, oing, oing. And she goes, Oh, you need that again. I go, mm, do I? Oh. She goes, yeah. You oh, do. I see. I go. Boy, oing, 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 oing. <laughs> I, though I said one time I go, could I get some scratch? She goes, oh, you want scratch? Not a problem. <laughs> so, sorry. It's all right. Well, what does boing, 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 boing mean? Like you have a neck problem? No, I that? need boner pills. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she got it. I got to pay more attention. Yeah, I was going. Boing, 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 boing. Har, har. I know. And then you have to get the, the, the amount. Okay, so you'll have 80 milligrams every two days. <laughs> I go, whatever's max. Yes, Max. Or I should say, that's crazy. No, I know. it's funny. I know. What yeah. The last thing I'll tell you is I went to the UFC fight. It was a busy weekend. Oh, yeah. This sounds like a lie. Yes. I was really jumping around. So I did. I go to UFC, which I do like. It was nice. UFC 300. It was kind of a big one. So this is the one. It was kind I of a hassle it. for Houston. Oh, yeah, you saw it. Yep. So I go there. Dana, Dana White always like takes care, which if you ever wanted to come, he said, come whenever you want. So we I, got a we like have a come. fun <laughs> row. We got Iron Mike Tyson in our row. We have um, and it's good because oh, you got a little space. It sounds name dropping. I'm just going to read the the list of who's there, just because it makes yeah, it more we, fun. We, we, I'll try to do it. I'll try to do an impression of everyone was there. Yeah, we we got better seats than being right up front because up here we can see all the stuff. You know, I almost told him to come on to promote that fight with Jake Paul because I want to say you better beat the shit up. No offense to Jake Paul. But Mike Tyson is a national hero, and he better do not even punch back. Just let him beat the shit out of you. Those are my thoughts. Right. I think Tyson, if Tyson is anywhere near Tyson, if he's 1%, he wins easily. If he's a half percent, <laughs> he might be close. The only thing I think about 57 and combat sports, Duration. but I'm sure they got Mike all, is just you go in, the first punch, and then you throw out your back. <laughs> right. So, and also, I think Jake will try to tire him out. You know, run around. Make him get tired because he's older. Um, that is probably what he'll do. Yeah. But if he, if, he's, if he, quote, stands and trades in the center oh, of the ring, yeah. alpha, alpha style, he might, uh, he might go nighty-night before yeah. he gets back to the hotel. Night hall. 
you know, when I, uh, that, mm-hmm. that happened in this fight, I won't bore you with the whole fight, but it was very fun because our boy, Dennis Miller is right here. Dennis is at the fight with his uh, kid holding. I saw him on, on camera. He yeah, looked great. So he fun. looked totally relaxed. He was in a great mood. And when Dennis is in a good mood, which is all the time when I see him, he's doing Dennis jokes, which are priceless. So Theo's here yes. and yeah. Jared Leto. And then uh, like Chris Pratt was there. And you know who else is there? Vivek Ramzawa. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. I like to oh, buy a vowel. You're all guys are all in the same row. The guy who ran for president. Yeah, he was there on the end of the row. And I'm like, Vivek? I don't see him everywhere. Jeez. So It's a rogues gallery. Yeah, and Miles yeah. Teller. I'm just trying to remember this row, just the row, because they're all, people are peppered all over. So we have this, and then there's the ring, and then right in front of me is Ted Serrano's, mm-hmm. his kid Tony. So, of course, I just make fun of him the whole time, because he's funny. And then uh, Ari Emanuel mm-hmm. and Dana. So... Jer- Jared Leto, who's super cool, he wanted super cool dude. He's with his brother, and we we uh, all goof from. But between Theo here, Dennis here, and Spudley in the middle, and now we're doing it's fight. Then we have intermission jokes, fight jokes, and we're all doing jokes. I couldn't have laughed harder. You would have loved it. It was so funny. What can I hear? What would what would Theo's joke? Uh, be? Well, a joke. Guy. I, you know, I was trying More to remember going. I'm going to tell Dane about this, but like Dennis. Just keeps mumbling things like, uh, for Christ's sakes, but if it gets any, it's, it's almost uh, the last fight. And this fucking Chris Pratt has already made three new raccoon movies <laughs> <laughs> between the first and last <laughs> fight. <laughs> I go Guardians of the Galaxy. Got it. And then, uh, and then Theo, got it, got it. Yeah. Theo, uh, these Theo two, just there was an Asian fight. Take. There was two Asian girls, which, to see women fight I, yep. is not my favorite thing. It's 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 so unnatural in the real world, and I don't it's, want to see that. It's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah it's tough. It's, that was a tough fight. So really, that was tough, and they're yeah. beating the shit out of each. They're both great. So they're doing it, yeah. and then uh, they got her, they got her in a hold. I think she's about to choke out, and Theo goes, "Give her the password." Like I don't even know what he's talking about, you know. So uh, <laughs> and then when these two guys are fighting, he goes, uh, "I think these these guys." go to law school together that was one and then when they were still funny he goes is this about an hoa problem all just all weird all funny because it's just all stupid yeah i could see dennis would be like okay we're up in row six you know you got the uh, Mm. first class down there in row two or three but that's Puts you back about seventy five k. I'm just trying. Dennis gets comped. And Dennis he, did look. He got a nice single shot. The great. Dennis oh, he Miller did. I here. love it. I love it because sometimes yeah, they show you I inside see- and you don't know if it's outside. But mm-hmm. uh, they they're popping around. If I was Dana White, I would just show everyone there because I saw Hoist Gracie, who's the first big Brazilian UFC fighter, like a legend, walking around. He just walks by. We all say hi to him. He doesn't really know us, but he's like, oh man, you're the best. And then there's people over here, I remember. And then there's football players. There's just a ton of people that they should just keep showing. It's just yeah. fun because in the downtime, there's nothing to do. So they cut to fighters in the audience, blah, blah. Uh, overall, do you have a look? If the camera comes on you, do you kind of look up and do a little, what's up? What, you know, I go camera's like this. on David Spade. You do that. Okay, ready? Camera's on. <laughs> Boom. And then I go like this. Like as if you're going to fight. I look at the camera. I go, what? What is it? And I go, Deej. Deej, deej, deej. Now that's one of them. That's one. <laughs> so you're, it's like you're a fighter? I guess, yeah. Here's the one. It's the octopus through the screen. Okay. So if they show you to fight like this. And what is that? That's an mean? octopus goes to the screen. Like, oh. you're, like you're an aquarium. <laughs> it's something. Okay. It's different. Josh to Hamilton like, knew that. Look, I... Could I get a couple tickets to the UFC? Yes. 301? Yes. It's great. I've become a fan of the sport. I get the sport now. It's not just brutal things going on. There's so much strategy and athleticism. So. Yes. And it's all, and you mm-hmm. hear the grunting and groaning and uh, uh, coming. Oh, just- so, you know, <laughs> when you're, uh, but, but like, so Gaethje fight, you know, in hindsight, maybe should have been last. If Don't be bored if you didn't see the fight. This, these two badasses get in there. And at the end of the first round, the guy does a backwards kick and kicks Gaethje and breaks his nose, right? It's hard enough to be right there to hear that cracking. Then he gets up and he comes back and he's like, birds, you know, you go, he's out of it. 
but he has to keep fighting because he's a monster and they don't, and he's one of the hardest hitters out there. So four more rounds of this. Yeah. He's tough. And he just, yeah. every time he gets hit in the nose, we're like, oh my God, because you know, it's hanging on by a thread and he just keeps fighting. He won't go down, but he's getting uh, beat up pretty bad. So the last 10 seconds, it's over. Obviously one Holloway won the other guy. And then Holloway, you mm -hmm. saw, did what you said about Tyson. He points to the middle of the ring and goes, like, let's yeah. hammer it out. So they go. <laughs> and he had won the fight. He had won the fight he, on the He on won the, the fight. Yeah. It's 10 seconds to go. You just run around and wave to the audience. Instead, he points at the thing. Meet me in the middle of the ring, and we'll see who's the badass. With 10 seconds to go, they're swinging all out. You were yeah, there. Yeah, just what, full windmills. <laughs> just And everyone yeah. freaked out and stood up like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Because you know the guy with the broken nose is like, what are we doing? Do we need to do this? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I would have been like, you won. We're all good. But he has to be tough and go, you're really going to do this to me? So windmill, and he gets cracked again, and he goes straight on his face with one second left in the whole fight. One second, he got a knockout. And he fell where, and folks? And he's completely still. It's on his scary. nose. On his nose. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, they what they say, it's, it's a figure of speech. But Gaethy was bleeding so much, they said he's wearing a crimson mask. It's a yeah. little cryptic. Dennis Miller said. Wearing a crimson mask. After this round, Did he's going to look like that? Lucille Sounds Ball. Like, <laughs> like her face is full of blood or that she's no, sort his of hair's all, his hair's red. His hair was red by then. <laughs> oh. oh, I see. <laughs> he goes, Christ, well, after this round, he's red. coming out looking like Lucy Ball. That joke only works if you think that she's got blood red follicles coming out of her skull. Yeah. I hope Dennis is listening. To yeah, this he's one. funny. So, <laughs> it, it, customarily, when terrible. someone wins, it's that good of a fight. You throw Vicodin at the uh, ring. So, we did that. And then the guy's like, <laughs> I would. And then he went is out. Then we saw him later. No. no. And then we saw him later, and he was in a wheelchair that pushed him around. But he did get up to do the, you know, the winner, the respectful thing. But Dude, I would have said, fuck it, I'm out. I got to go lay down. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. It's... All right. Let's get to the headlines, the real headlines. Let's, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> they don't say that anymore. They used to. Okay. And I heard he got $10,000 every time he said it. Now he says, it's time. You have tons of businesses, you're an entrepreneur, and when you're hiring mm -hmm. in your small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. This is a big problem That's because it. sometimes this you need someone it. right then. Someone quits or you just can't have them anymore or you need a hold of fill. Yeah. You got to check out LinkedIn mm -hmm. Jobs. LinkedIn, everyone has heard of. I know LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. On LinkedIn, David, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. They hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Hire professionals like a professional. That's very fast. And, and, and you know, it's not just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. Mm -hmm. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're probably looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. They know that small businesses are wearing so many hats, might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn's constantly finding ways to make the process easier. Uh, yep. They even launched, what was it? Oh, a feature that helps you write job descriptions making the process even easier and quicker. Get this, 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. I you heard me. It. Yeah, I believe it. Don't be jealous. I'm, I am a little jealous. That's a lot. Do you have a Post, call to action? I do. Post your job for free at mm -hmm. linkedin.com slash fly23. That's linkedin.com slash fly23. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let's read it for the people driving. This yeah. is an article says Chris Farley biopic in the works with Paul Walter Hauser in lead role. Mm -hmm. David comment. Um, 
I had heard I, I had heard some whispers about this for a long time. I've run into this guy, Paul. You're a very nice guy. I think he's been wanting mm-hmm. to do this for a while. I don't know how I'm a little ambivalent about it. I I, I don't know. I, I just know that if Margot Robbie passes on mm-hmm. playing me in the movie. Uh, we're gonna wind up with JoJo Siwa. <laughs> she plays you. She every <laughs> role you lose, she's played. You would have been Barbie. <laughs> I could have easily in. been Barbie. You could have been Barbie. Yeah. You've got those Carrie Undergrass Underwood legs. I got Carrie Underwood legs. Um, here's all right. In all seriousness, yeah, I wish him the best. I mm. think it's great. I think one-offs and charisma. If it's very hard to get used to it in a film, I, like even. Um, the last Elvis movie, the guy did incredible, but you never reach Elvis. It's impossible. The charisma, it you know, but it was the best I'd seen, mm-hmm. and it, you know, but the same thing with Will Smith <laughs> when he played Muhammad Ali, he was absolutely fantastic. But the whole time you're going, but that it, you can't do Muhammad Ali. So I wish this guy the best to do Chris Farley. There's so much stuff there i don't know i'll be curious i don't know how you do that you know i don't know where you focus i mean they either. they approached me to play you uh, the <laughs> david spade story well i'm a little older and they go you know so i mean we've done some makeup tests all we gonna do it can i capture you i don't know <laughs> they could have you hey, play buddy, me that's all this, I have. and then someone will have to play you and so the car broke down <laughs> <laughs> that's me <laughs> and then they just cut away <laughs> octopus uh anyway what what are your thoughts on this because you you you're chris's right hand man or he was your right hand man yes i um, i somehow turned into the your guys are partners de facto widow uh you know um i you, you knew know, him best i wish him well it's very like you said it's very hard to capture the highs and lows and the greatness and the just pure likability um, and the innocence and everything yeah. that was great about him. You know, it's the stuff between the lines. It's yeah. the way he would look at you when he was going to do a joke or the way he would go. He'd laugh insanely hard, mm-hmm. like fr- coming from someplace else. And I know he's laughing. Comedians will sometimes laugh at a, a comedian's joke just because the idea of someone trying to be funny is funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and they're doing it for just, you yeah kind of like it's and nice. then i don't know chris had so many uh sub rhythms and so many little like when he would do the honking one when he laughed so hard <laughs> i don't i can't do it but you know that one where he'd go to like he's almost choking he's yeah. laughing so hard and he would and he so would anyway there's up. a meal to be had there he would give it up yeah. as a comedian and laugh if you said something funny he would laugh so yes. hard and it was that's that's one of the nicest things when comedians give it up and they don't just wait and then do their joke and laugh. So that I, I would, I would like, I, I would hope it doesn't just turn into about drugs. I just want it to be the whole thing because you could focus like this SNL movies focus on the first SNL ever done. And I'd say that's, that's enough for one yeah. movie. So with how much he did, I would want it to be mm-hmm. more upbeat, hopefully. If they did a biopic on me, it would be hardly anything about Saturday Night Live and focus on on the movie Trapped in Paradise or something, <laughs> <laughs> or Clean Slate. Yeah, I don't have quite. I don't have much of a resume in the film department. <laughs> but to your point, I think Chris, the timeline of the last year or two on SNL into Tommy Boy is this period of time where Chris was full Chris, yeah. and it's all there. And I would focus on that. Yeah, I, I so, that's our two cents. He, well, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. That, uh, I agree. Call me, call me crazy. That's what um, I would focus on. This is a story I pulled because I just thought it's not that much to talk about. But this pitcher who passed away, I didn't know well, he he yeah. traded wives with his teammates when he was like you know thirty or something. So I read a little bit about this. If you don't know, if you don't know, so he has a, has a teammate <laughs> okay. with a cute wife and. um they all hang out a lot and they realize they like the other guy's mm-hmm. wife. So they said, let's switch. And so they decide to switch mm-hmm. whole families. So they switch kids and well, the animals. They switch kids and wa- switch houses. Everything. Kind of? Everything. 
That was that's that that why isn't okay. this a movie? This is so interesting. Well, they had a. I mean, is this a real story? I have to go. Is that this might be the one. Is like, wow. there's no way. It, it, write us if on YouTube and tell us if this is real because I think it's real, but sometimes I fib for attention. Well, it's like I have a new husband. Everything is new <laughs> for about three months, it's and like, then get you out of here. You're nothing. I never should have swapped for you. I was attracted for about six weeks, but you got a gas problem. So get the fuck out of here. And that's the wife. <laughs> that's Wait, the wife. Which one? Swapped. I don't know. Yeah. It was just a voice and a character. <laughs> um, and, you know. And then the kids are, I, you're my daddy. And then a week later, I hate you. <laughs> I'm sure there's You're a whole- You're not my real dad. Let's do the movie. I would think we could do, Let's the, movie. do the movie. We switch, the and movie. then they don't know we switch because we look the same. <laughs> well, yes. Actually, but to, to that, I went to the movies, and the woman taking my ticket, I go to these 10 a.m. matinees. Mm -hmm. She goes, hey, and I had a baseball cap on. She goes, has anyone ever told you you look like David Spade? Yeah. And I here was my ad lib. I don't know if it's very good. I said only David Spade. Yeah, that's a good one. And she went, she went, she went, ha 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 ha. I know. They don't There's, know if this it's is you this or me whole or we don't know. Movie theater in the middle of nowhere. So they thought it was impossible that they, that I could be David Spade. So they just thought it was a funny rejoinder. I he got said the only exact David same Spade. thing going into the elevators at the airport. The guy behind me goes, <laughs> Carby. And I just go, mm. <laughs> and then I go, hey, man. <laughs> so they don't think that you're a dick. I said, hi. I said, oh, hey, man, what's up? Well, let's do it. Let's do a litmus test. Mm -hmm. You know, you come over to my house and you just go, you come in and you go, honey, I'm home. Hey, Paula. And see if Paula goes, hi, hi, Dana. <laughs> she goes, oh, you All look right. older. And I go, no, I don't look older. I look younger. Older. She's like, no. You are much younger. In real life, you're really rough. Okay, next story. Mm. Soccer player okay. Kaka. I like his name. Oh, did you go Kaka in That's your a... diapers? Um, <laughs> is that how you say his name? Kaka? Get out of here! <laughs> you're filling up your diaper and get the fuck out! You I wish I switched problem. with Kaka. <laughs> okay, so... I don't want doing this voice. Go ahead. Kaka's just got divorced. She said he was too perfect. So this is an interesting story. Not riveting, but interesting. Oh, here she says, Kaka never betrayed me. He treated me well. He gave me a wonderful family, but I was not happy. Something was missing. The problem was he was too perfect. Okay. Now, this, this is just a marriage didn't work out. But yeah, if I were her, I wouldn't volunteer, volunteer this statement. I just would leave it at we had. It just didn't work out. He's a great guy. It didn't work out. Uh, to say this makes her look bad, I think. Dana? Well, there's two. Uh, okay, let, let's unpack this. Yeah, unpack <laughs> We it. got all the time in the world. Is she saying this because she broke his heart and this was a way to bolster his ego? Oh. I'm leaving you. And the guy said, well, but my, my name is Kaka. How can you leave me? Because you're too perfect. Oh, I'm no, happy you're right. now. That's all I, I gave you two little tiny yeah. cockas. She goes, the kids? Well, well I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what a guy with a name Kaka would sound like. So I did a nondescript accent. Yeah. Again, just sort of like, mm hmm I just, this just um, in. I just brothers... Googled it. It's uh, Spanish for poo poo. Uh, I was going to say that no, his brother's name it. is Poo Poo and yeah, his sister's name it. is Fifi's and he's named Kaka. Hi, our kids are Kaka, Fifi's and Poo Poo. Her oh. name is Pee Pee. <laughs> she should have mentioned that. Uh, no, so we, we've turned this story into a mess, but. Are we losing listeners? Yes, or, we just, I just saw the live yeah. charts and it's shooting down. But I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think she's there. <laughs> listen, there's sometimes it doesn't work out and you don't know okay. what to say, but she's probably saying it's not you. It's me. I just want that's, something. I think that's basically it's like to protect the ego. That's my thing. Yeah, that's a nice, nice thing to say. Next. Okay, next. Next. <laughs> 
Scrabble makes historic change to game with less competitive, inclusive version to appeal to Gen Z. Ah, uh, hmm. so I don't really get this. Does it? Do they change the way you can spell a word? I guess you know if you play Scrabble, like during the pandemic, I played Scrabble with my wife, and she she beat me like seventy eight out of seventy nine games. <laughs> She'd come up with a fifty four point triple word score so it can hurt your feelings it can ding your ego a little sure. bit your your self-esteem mm -hmm. when you're dominated that much so i'm assuming less competitive inclusive means you know you're just not going to get your feelings as hurt so it's a perfect scrabble for today i'm a grumpy old man <laughs> kids are weak today maybe you can <laughs> spell words pretty close or you can spell them phonetically. Yeah. So if it's an F um, sound, you don't have to put PH, you can put F. Right. Like if Phoenix. it was foreclosure, you could spell it F O C A L S double A K R. Foreclosure. <laughs> yeah, that's close enough, Brian. Good you got one, it. Man. I know what that's you mean. That's a triple word score. Yeah, that's a thousand points. Yeah. You can also decide what your points are. Okay, next story. And Monopoly, the new Monopoly game, you get Boardwalk free uh, before you start playing. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> you inherit it. It's called Nepo, Nepo Monopoly. Oh, it's called Monopoly. <laughs> and I go, I, I want to play Monopoly. I want to pick Monopoly. to play Judd Apatow's kid, whatever one that is. <laughs> Judd Apatow. That's Apatow? Mr. Soros. All right, hey. I'm Judd Apatow. It's a little Bernie Bernstein, <laughs> God rest his soul, creeping in. Uh, it's just a basically thing we do. With oh, that, Dana, right? I wanted to put okay. you through this because, and then we'll get to more important I issues. See it. Coachella was last week, and Dana, you've heard about Coachella every yeah. week. I don't know that much. I haven't well, been there. Jello. They have all mm -hmm. the bands. People just go there to hang out. It's do, my do drugs basically. My nightmare. A hundred thousand yeah. stinky people with lines of outhouses, and I, yeah, no, I don't like big crowds. Right, and the, and the, and there's <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's porta potties, and there's bands, and there's Everyone basically mm -hmm. goes there just to have fun and take pictures for Instagram. So here's a sketch I did. Yeah. We're going to play it. And if you're watching at home and it doesn't play, that means someone pulled it off of YouTube because it's not mine. It, it'll be edited. You'll hear this part, but you won't see it. Yeah. But here we go. Let's so let's play, it. play the whole thing. Charlotte McKinney's in it. Oh, Jesus. Loud. We can talk Next. over it. Hey. Hi. Heading into Coachella? Yes, sir. Okay. Just a couple quick questions. Um, how long are you going to be in here? Just three days. Okay. How many outfit changes do you have? Uh, about 32. Feels a little light, but that's up to you. Do you have a job you can get back to Monday? Absolutely not. <laughs> Bit of a loser? Okay. <laughs> Quick question. Is wind going to be blowing like full time? Because, you know, I'd rather it not be so windy. I'll mark down your preference. Okay. Back to what you're not doing. Do you have any special skills? Uh, Yeah. You know, I, I know how to Instagram pretty well. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah, well, isn't that kind of like a GED? Yeah, it's sort of like a year of dry, <laughs> I would guess. What's the worst thing that's ever happened to you at Coachella? Well, one time I had to wear my backup sunglasses because I forgot my cool ones. And my backup sunglasses are so <laughs> shitty. Oh, and then uh, I got molested one time by a bouncer. So. Okay, so which one was the worst? Oh, the backup sunglasses. I hear you. I've had that happen. It's horrible. Okay, well, this is a bit personal, but what's the highest number of followers uh, of someone you've had sex with at Coachella? I had sex with a guy who had like 28K. That is a lot of Ks. Um, okay, and what did he do? I think he was a DJ and a personal trainer and a rapper. Oh, and a William Morris agent. Sounds focused. And where did you have sex? A porta potty? I mean, where else would you do it? His hotel was like six miles away or something. I got it. I got I it. I get it. What bands are you looking forward to seeing? There's bands here? Yeah, there's nice. going to be like 70. Oh, that's great. When did they add that? Oh, probably like 14 years ago. Oh, so if we get bored, we can just go watch the bands or something? I think that's the idea. If you run out of everything to do, maybe see a band. Also, that guy from Guns N' Roses, can you like tell him in between sets to like stop talking? Because, you know, I just rather I'm not. Less blab from Axel. Okay. Hey, nice. before you go in, would you want to buy some coupons for the Molly stand? It's gluten free this year which is great. And if you buy a coupon, it's sort of a bonus. You get half off of all Moonrocks until 5 p.m. 
Um, it's a lot cheaper if you buy it here. I'm just giving you a tip it's between us girls. And uh, there's an IV stand about 30 feet in. You hook it up and it just pumps a lot of self-esteem back into your body for when you're driving home and you're so embarrassed and it's three hours and you're like, what the fuck am I doing in my life? Obviously nothing. I've been at Coachella for four days. No one's missed me at all. I haven't missed work. I haven't missed shit. My dog's probably dead and I want to blow my brains out. But let's go to in and out you know what I mean? Uh, in and outs not really my thing. <laughs> oh, why? Mm, kind of on a diet. How long have you been on a diet? Since I was born. <laughs> on a side note, they want me to ask, who would you vote for for president if the elections were right now? I think the Biebs. Biebs? Okay. If he somehow isn't running, who would, who would it be? Mm, I think that old guy, Colonel Sanders. He says Coachella is going to be free next year. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he did. That was Bernie Sanders and, uh, back then. Can you promise that when you do see bands that you hold up your phone to block anyone near you and then overfilm the fuck out of it and Snapchat it? No one will ever fucking care and they'll hit your guts <laughs> for it. Well, yeah, because I have to have a story. Yeah, that's right. Lastly, how many times have you Snapchatted that filter of you with like a dog sticking your tongue out? Um, that one, I don't know, maybe like a thousand. <laughs> we'll keep it up. It does not get old. <laughs> that was oh, how many years ago? That was that probably was like great. not. How, Heather, how long ago was that? Nine years? Oh, no. What do you think? Roughly off the top of your head. We'll get back to you. That's why some of the jokes are a little stale, but it's kind of funny, right, Dan? It's, it's funny. It I mean, she funny played guy. great. She played straight and yeah. then... Uh, consistent funny jokes and then when you started swearing you're fucking your loser life and all that shit it's a thing you could watch more than once yeah. this is a lot of a lot of patter in there yeah a lot know? of back and forth okay thank you that's yeah. it that's and, it and a question. lot of uh kind of roasting sort of that personality yeah she was good the sport. shallowness of whatever that's charlotte McKinney. but that yeah okay uh, stuff it Alec, 2018 Alex, what's his name? 2016 so according to my calculations, that's Set, 28 eight years, years ago. Yep. Seven, eight years. <laughs> okay, what's this? What am I watching? Is this yours, Dana? I don't know. Hi, guys. No. My name's Kendall. Huge fan. David, growing up, my brother and I used to fight like crazy, and we'd have to go to work with our parents and fight there and just embarrassing for them and for us. Um, and when Diggy Roberts came out, that movie brought us together. Like We enjoyed that movie so much and still do. Dana, you are so genuine and so funny, and I love your guys' take on things. My question, advice mm. is, how do you guys oh. keep your creativity going? How do you not stay stagnant and keep so with it? Yeah, I, I'm going to nominate that as the nicest message we've gotten. Yeah, the advice is smart. She pads it up front with nice things and then uh, asks, that was an advice, our advice column, but I didn't see it coming, but I figured it out. Okay, mm. so you go first. Um, I mean, as, as far as me being sincere, I remember a lot of the time people would ask me that kind of thing, and they would they take a creative writing class or a creative seminar mm. or some kind of self help thing to unlock your inner creativity. Um, to me, it was a fat joint and a bunch of stone high school kids. No, uh, I don't know. I think just being playful and goofy. I would say stay up 36 hours, get really punchy, and then have your friends throw topics at you and see if you can come up with an interesting take. David, yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah, I think you know we're lucky because most people have regular jobs and aren't in the comedy world, so we're sort of always either out to do stand up, so we have to sort of think of things we have to look at the news and see if there's something mm -hmm. to joke about and then there's mm -hmm. just the fact that i hang out with people like you or people that i think are amusing and then we make each other laugh so that that does help it i think keeping everything light and keeping uh that i don't know uh day to day i mean it's hard it's hard because a lot of there's it's hard out there in the real world and busting your hump at work all day so well, she was she seems, saying she that she like wants very to be a person. comedian or just be No, creative. I think she's saying how does um, how do you keep it light and creative and uh keep the creativity I would going. say that, you know, there is a little bit of the 10,000 hour thing. Like once you're you you you're committed to comedy and like you said hanging out with comedians, you kind of know that there's something funny in almost everything, mm. you know? Like I this isn't even something I would put in my act, but it just made me laugh. You've been in an elevator with a guy, a stranger, mm. 
and he gets off on his floor and he turns and says, see you later. Should I be worried? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good example. You ever had a guy say, see you later? Of someone of taking a very mundane situation. It's not a killer. It's it's not a killer. Will that be? Yeah. But here's an example. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. The social battery for me is a little drained. Uh, uh, Social batteries, mine is usually pretty high. I have a pretty decent life. I try to take it easy, get my eight hours, but you know what? A lot of flying around, a lot of gigs, a lot of this and that, not enough boundaries. Uh, mm-hmm. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings. You know, they pick up after winter. It's getting to be nice out. Yeah. You know, you could be with people, even if they're in some people, they just drain you. Maybe they mm-hmm. just talk about their problems or whatever. Mm-hmm. With BetterHelp, you can kind of identify these toxic relationships and sort of manage them so you're not just exhausted all the time. Yeah, you get around those uh, energy vampires. They take all your good energy and they blab and blab. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're you're an upbeat guy. I think my resting... <laughs> resting disposition. Is I love upbeat. when you proclaim what I am. I, I mean, uh, you're, you're a happy go lucky dude. You're over there clicking <laughs> you're your heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have one of those things you blow at a birthday party every night. Yeah, you run around with a kazoo. So uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a better one. I think yeah. we both benefited from therapy. Uh, I think it helped me. I think you have, you've said before it's helped you. Uh, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of benefit to that. I think you got to address it and try to get through some stuff. If you're thinking of starting therapy, I I think BetterHelp would be the place. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. What you do Mm -hmm. is you fill out a brief questionnaire. uh, You get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapist if you don't Mm -hmm. like it. No reason, no Mm -hmm. charge. And that's it. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Superfly today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. That's H-E-L-P <laughs> dot com slash Superfly. I just wrote down, this is going to go on for weeks. We should cover it almost like channel Superfly action news. Yeah, we're, we do a lot of breaking Trump news. Trump is going to trial. Yep. I yeah. That. Trump is going to trial in New York. This is different than the other ones. They're picking a jury. For the Stormy Daniels, he had sex with her in a hotel room in 2006, 2011. In Touch Magazine was going to give her 15K to spill the beans. Then they, Trump's fixer, Cohen, his lawyer, put the kibosh on that. Then she came out later. Then allegedly, Trump's fixer, lawyer, Took out a mortgage on his home, paid her 130K to be quiet. She did an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. And now there's a trial um, about Trump paying back his lawyer and not saying, you know, in the on the what check. What it was for. This is for play playing off the ex porn star Stormy <laughs> Daniel for the night in the hotel room so she'll keep a trap shut. That's what this check. So he didn't do that. In the memo. So yeah. he has to become president at this point because. No one can keep track of the trials in the affidavit. So <laughs> I can't. He has to become president, and his inaugural address will just be pardoning himself <laughs> for know. the for the charge of inflating my assets in New York City. I thereby pardon <laughs> Donald J. Yeah. Trump. I pardon all of it. It's like three hours long. <laughs> 729 affidavits. The charges are in the thousands. I pardon every single one of them. That's all. What do you think about that? Whole Give yourself a new start. Should nine again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Th- there's so many. Uh, the-, the news is pretty confusing because there's so much going on everywhere. There's a trial. There's a war. There's a uh, border crisis. There's, there's a million things going on. So I'm trying to figure out which one to be worried mm-hmm. about the most at all times. So I'm just constantly in a state of mm-hmm. tight shoulders. Um, but I don't know what to do. That's it's, true. And how to make fun of it. Yeah. How know, to spin it all right. and joke about it all because it's my only way to survive it. It's all scary. And I don't, and I, and it's, it's never been a time in my young years. I'm very young 
but it's never been a time you where young. I haven't been worried about so many things and, and so many things I have no control over. It's hard to separate it all. Mm. It's a little unsettling. I don't know if it's social media or just the times we're in, but I think a lot of people thought that Trump was so exhausting. We're going to do this and there, and he's calling people names, and Nancy Pelosi, not a nice person. And <laughs> so then when Biden came in, what everything's going to calm down. Yeah, what? A <laughs> She's got a mouth on us. She swears like a sailor, this woman. And now it is. It's like, it's a little, it's a little twisted. I, I mean, as far as, Trump and this particular charge, I just thought that we kind of settled the idea that sex with a politician is a different lane. Because almost everybody, FDR had a girlfriend, JFK harvested yeah. basically <laughs> Eastern Washington. And then Clinton, that whole thing, you know, where he goes, he goes, I did not have sex with that woman. Mm. And if you play back the tape in slow motion, his finger is spelling I am lying my ass off. <laughs> so, and then he lied to the grand jury, but everyone understood he's just trying to protect his family. So with this one night stand in a hotel room 20 years ago, we're going to reorientate the American society. But yeah, that's I don't know. That's harder. That's a hot take. When there's a war, and listen, he probably did do something wrong. That's, that's, it's more like, if you look at the crime in the news every day and people are getting set free, you're like, this is what we focus on. Like, let's just, how about we get the people that are beating people with baseball bats? Like that's, I'd, ra I'd rather start with that or do it all, but do it all. But yeah, this is a white collar crime. If he did, if he didn't earmark the ledger properly, it's more, uh, there's no real victim victim, but as far as, uh, Rob, someone putting a gun in a guy's head and robbing his store, I'd focus on the violence first, but that's just me. I'm a nut. Right. I'm crazy like that too. When they, when I saw that video of the guy kick the woman backwards down the stairs, I was like, good God, what are we doing? That's, that's terrifying to me. Uh, but is there any sadder news? What else do you got going? Um, I just have by popular demand, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Biden itching his nose. People oh, yeah. seem to like it. So I thought okay. I'd do a part two. Sure. Let me back myself up a little mm -hmm. bit. This is, this is an earthquake now, understand. Biden, is it? <laughs> no, it could be. Yeah. Hey, there's one over here too. Hey, Joe, it's a, it's an earthquake. Oh, it's not. That's the way the world seems all the time. <laughs> 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 Uh, Go ahead. Okay. This is him itching his nose and Barack Obama watching on television and kind of yelling at him to go okay. faster. So this is when President <laughs> Biden, who <laughs> is just he's is older and they're working him hard. Some days they yeah, have they like 10 him. speeches. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you could tell he's so tired and he kind of wanders off and he sits down and he itches his nose <laughs> very slowly. This is a sequel. Too slow Pop for Obama. Popular demand. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, so the people, where is everybody? Come on. I said, I said what I was going to say. And then he goes and he sits. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Here it comes. He feels an itch. Now he's got to make a move. Faster, Joe. Joe, faster. It's Obama. Joe, faster. Come yeah. on. Joe, hit your nose. Joe, get to your nose. You got it, Joe. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Yo, drop, drop your index finger from your left nostril. Do it now. Drop your. <laughs> Joe, that was slower than the moon hey. landing. <laughs> Joe, drop it fast. Joe. Let gravity Joe. take over. <laughs> He's happy. He got the itch. Well, He's like, look, I'm not in it. Let's just. Let's just unpack this. I'm not in a television studio. I love I'm it. I'm trying to think on my Zoom shot, what looks <laughs> funniest. So I brought the finger up slowly from Out here. Out of frame, you right. Know, I, I liked it. This. Yeah. 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 Uh, Joe, faster, Joe. Play along at home. Faster, Joe. Uh, yeah. And drop a fish. <laughs> Joe, Joe. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Obama's getting farther away. Joe. I actually thought of doing Biden as Bob Ross, the painter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do some cheese over here. Yeah. Oh, and you, Ukraine. Yeah, let's give him a tank. Uh, <laughs> a tank a over tank. here? Just a, 
That's okay. a little tank. Maybe a couple of bullets too, over here. I don't give them too, not too many, just a little tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you can keep going with that one. That one's good. <laughs> well, yeah, that one you could kind of do. We'll, we'll do stuff. we'll do a longer yeah. version next week. I like that one. Yeah. Mm. All right. What um, else? Because I got some. So, by the way, week. I did I did see. This is all I got left for okay. today. King Kong. I did see the movie with Godzilla because you mentioned it. Yeah. And the funniest thing to me that there's like five monsters in the movie. There's mm. a frozen one. There's Godzilla. There's mm. King Kong. There's a flying one. Every single one, when it would announce itself, would open its mouth and scream. And it, it there must have been a hundred screams in that movie. It's like here comes Buckwell the monster. <laughs> Yeah, and it would echo way out. Yeah. I mean, and I, after the hundredth time, it didn't scare me. I much. know, and all the I other monsters can sleep. hear it, and then they know it's it's like hearing it's time. They know they have to fight. And I love that Godzilla on planet Earth is looking for a cozy lair, a place to just. Oh, he's rest his he, head. you know where he sleeps? <laughs> and he goes, ah, the Roman Coliseum. Yeah, no, he sleeps. I think he sleeps in like Dodger <laughs> so, Stadium. Roma. No, Giant Stadium he sleeps in, right? Oh, I thought it was Roman Coliseum. Oh, you know, it might have been. It is similar. Plus, Let's go to the tape. I wasn't really paying attention. He was sleeping in something. Roman Coliseum. Roman Coliseum. Roman so, 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 so. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, let's put a little missile in Ukraine. Just a couple. Yeah. There you go. Much. Just chill. Get some, gr- get some green there. tanks. Yeah. yeah, it's a green tank. <laughs> the problem with Zoom is that your hand is always no, you're a, doing good. a superstar. <laughs> no, you go back here. Yeah. It's a green tank. Uh, okay, so I will tell you. Uh, I could do the guru better with these glasses because you can see my eyes more. That's do you want to save the guru for next week? I Everyone love the guru. Yes, I just want to. Just here's a preview. Just that the, That's the face. Just the eyes of Rideau. Coming soon. <laughs> Guess if I'm talking. You're giving away too much. Oh, I like that song. <laughs> you know, Biden could just let his hand. Now, now I've gotten officially punchy. No, you got punchy. Okay, so I'm on Kill Tony this week. That podcast. Uh, uh, with David Tell, what which night, is fun. Where, or where, does, where does it? That's uh, wherever uh, YouTube is sold. Uh, It'll, you can go it, watch YouTube, it. Kill Tony. Okay. Watch Kill Tony for free. And, watch uh, ours for and free. And I'm on This the comes out Friday. What are your dates? You want to Oh, yeah. Dates? I'm coming up. I got Florida, Clearwater. You can go to davidspade.com. I got Orlando. I've got some Vegas. So check it out. That's it. Thank you, guys. Ooh. Thank you, Dana. See David Spade. All right. Miss you, we'll Dana. Talk in, we'll talk in five. We'll talk in two minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'll call you right back. Okay, bye. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Superfly is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade. Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Jenna Weiss-Berman of Odyssey. Heather Santoro and Greg Holtzman. Hope you liked it. Mm-hmm.